As a warning, this experiment involves strong acids and high heat. Ether is extremely volatile and ignites easily. This experiment must absolutely only be carried out in an extremely well ventilated area. Ether can also be ignited by things like a hot plate and not necessarily just a flame. Ether is heavier than air and can travel along surfaces like a bench top until an ignition source is found. For this experiment, I use 340 milliliters of anhydrous ethanol, 80 milliliters of concentrated sulfuric acid, 20 grams of sand, and some saturated sodium bicarbonate solution as well as some saturated sodium chloride solution. 90 milliliters of anhydrous ethanol is added to a three-necked round bottom flask in an ice bath. A thermometer was added and the ethanol was allowed to sit in the ice bath to cool until about 5 degrees Celsius. Using an addition funnel, 80 milliliters of concentrated sulfuric acid was added dropwise slowly. The entire addition took about 15 minutes. After the addition of the sulfuric acid, the flask was removed from the water bath and 20 grams of acid washed sand was added. The solution is yellow because the sulfuric acid I used was slightly contaminated, but this shouldn't affect the reaction. My apparatus was then set up as shown. An addition funnel was attached and an oil bath was set up. I used a fractional column, but you can do simple distillation, but you will have more water and sulfuric acid in your final product. I don't show it here, but a hose leading outside was attached to the vacuum adapter and an ice bath was set up underneath the receiving flask. Also, keep in mind, it might not appear this way, but this area is extremely well ventilated. The hot plate was turned on and the oil was heated. Our target temperature of the ethanol sulfuric acid mixture is about 140 degrees Celsius to 145 degrees Celsius. Going above 150 degrees will favor the formation of ethylene gas instead of diethyl ether. However, below about 135 degrees, the rate of ether production is quite low. The reaction occurring is an acid-catalyzed alcohol condensation. One ethanol molecule attacks the other to form diethyl ether and water. At about 110 degrees Celsius, the solution started to boil. The bubbles are diethyl ether, but not enough was made to escape the flask. It took about until 130 degrees for the rate of ether production to be enough to carry up through the fractional column and to the condenser. However, at 130 C, the rate of production is very slow, so you want to increase the temperature until at least 140 C. You want to match the rate of ethanol addition from the addition funnel to the rate of ether that is distilling over. This is my final crude yield of diethyl ether. Because I use the fractional column, the amount of ethanol, water, and sulfuric acid that's in my final product will be less than if you use the simple distillation. If you use the simple distillation, you'll likely have to wash with the sodium bicarbonate solution a few more times than I did. So first, the crude ether was transferred to a separatory funnel. It was then washed twice with 50 milliliters of saturated sodium bicarbonate solution and once with saturated sodium chloride solution. For the sake of time, I don't actually show the washing step. Frequent venting is extremely important when you do the washing with sodium bicarbonate and with ether in general. After each washing, the lower aqueous layer is drained into a beaker. The washed ether is then transferred to a 500 milliliter round bottom flask. To the ether is added 25 grams of anhydrous calcium chloride. The calcium chloride is used to absorb both ethanol and water. It is recommended that you cool your ether on an ice bath before adding the calcium chloride, unlike I did, because the hydration of the calcium chloride is exothermic. I let the ether sit with the calcium chloride for one hour in an ice bath. Then I reset up a distillation and redistilled over the ether using a water bath. This time, a simple distillation is enough. I kept the water bath temperature low at around 40 to 50 degrees Celsius. The distillation was carried out until there is no more ether in the distillation flask. In the collecting flask, I was left with a final yield of 208 milliliters of diethyl ether, which represents a yield of about 70%. The ether was then transferred to a dark bottle and the threads of the bottle was sealed with Teflon tape. Be aware that ether does form dangerous peroxides when stored for a long time. 
It is recommended to add a little bit of KOH or NaOH to prevent peroxide formation.